Hi there, I'm Jim Zirin. Welcome back for some more conversations. David Rubenstein is with us. David Rubenstein is a legendary private equity investor, a patriotic philanthropist, an amazing talk show host with his own program on Bloomberg TV, and now an author of three books. His latest book just published is entitled engagingly, The American Experiment, a series of 31 interviews with leading Americans in which he covers our history, our values, our successes and our failures. We're delighted to welcome David Rubenstein back to the program. Well, hi, David. Congratulations on your book, uh, An American Experiment, which has become an instant bestseller. Uh, now, this is the third book in your uh, trilogy. You had the American story and how to lead, uh, really a great accomplishment. Um, but I'd like to ask you, uh, why is this book different from all the other books? Well, um, this one is basically designed to give people a look at the country's beginnings, what the plans were at the beginning, and how we tried to live up to those plans. In, and, and obviously, the, the efforts have failed in some cases, and in some cases, we still have struggles. But we had an incredible rhetoric in the Declaration of Independence and, and the Constitution about what we were trying to do in this country, this experiment in representative democracy. And many times we have lived up to the experiment in terms of the goals, but many times we have not. And this really takes you through the failures and the successes of this experiment. What did you mean by the American experiment? I mean, experiment, um, I think, is kind of a scientific procedure where you're testing something and it either succeeds or fails. I guess that's the analogy. Uh, but how does that relate to uh, the American experience? Well, the column colonies were really creatures of England, and they really were creatures of Western Europe. And in those days, um, Western European countries were basically ruled by kings. And there were some parliaments, obviously, in England, there was a parliament, but they didn't have as much power as uh, parliaments do today, or, or, or Congresses do. The king had a fair amount of authority. And what uh, the, the founding fathers wanted to do was to create a, a new kind of system of government, which was a representative democracy with no king. And, uh, and no uh, overruling parliament. They would have a, an executive, a, a parliament, or a Congress, but also a judiciary. And those three branches, which were created a kind of a separation of powers, it was an experiment to see whether we could have government that would work for the people in this way. And that's why it was really the, the, a unique, uh, I call the American experiment. Now, do you think of uh, our form of government as a democracy? Well, Democracy really means in the ancient uh, Athenian sense, everybody votes on everything. And obviously when you have big populations, you can't have a, a, anything but a representative democracy. And so that's what we, we created, a representative democracy out of whole cloth. Nothing had ever been done like this before. Uh, there were revolutions later than the American Revolution where similar governments were set up. But before the American Revolution, there really had no been never been a situation where a People came together and said, we're going to have a representative democracy. We're going to be freed of all tides of king with kings and aristocracies. And it was unique. And as Benjamin Franklin said at the beginning of the book, famously, when he was asked what we're creating, and he said a republic, if you can keep it, what he meant was, it's not clear that a representative democracy could survive. And in fact, Thomas Jefferson, who was not part of the Constitutional Convention, he actually went wrote to Madison and said, Look, this might work about for about 20 years. In fact, it wouldn't be a bad idea if every 20 years we changed uh, the way the government structured. Ultimately, Jefferson changed his mind. But the idea of, of this whole government being something new as an experiment was was something that everybody recognized. It was it was different than anything that ever been done before. Well, in your business, uh, Jefferson's uh, statement might have been called a material understatement. But you dedicate your book, interestingly, to the public servants who protect our democracy. Uh, why this dedication? The greatest stress test of our representative democracy was the uh, Civil War. And the Civil War uh, was kind of baked into the Constitution when we agreed to allow slavery to occur. And ultimately, um, it, it produced a Civil War and 3% of our population died in that Civil War, an incredible number of people. We've had other stress tests in our democracy. Um, I would say Vietnam War was a stress test. I think Watergate was a stress test. But in the last two years, we had two stress tests. One was the enormous pandemic health problem that really stressed the economy and stressed the whole um, way our government works in terms of providing health care to people. 
But the other stress tests occurred after the presidential election when President Trump basically said the election had been stolen from him. And then we had the events of January 6th. And in the events of January 6th, I felt that the judges who basically threw out all these cases uh, really deserve some credit because the judges basically were saying, look, we don't really think there's any evidence of fraud here and we are uh, gonna be a apolitical and we're not political creatures. And they really stood up to a lot of pressure. And so did some of the election uh, officials, some of the state election officials in let's say Georgia or Arizona, Pennsylvania, they were called and asked to kind of do some things that would help the president. And they resisted that because the facts didn't warrant it. So I really dedicated the book to the people who I think helped get us through this stress test of the uh, election.